Welcome to the American Landscape. Today, we're at the Dwarf Car Museum in Maricopa, Arizona. Hi, I'm Greg Knight, and welcome to the American Landscape. On today's road trip across the American landscape, we're heading to the Dwarf Car Museum in Maricopa, Arizona. It's just 52 miles from Phoenix, Arizona, 92 miles from Tucson, Arizona, and 157 miles from Yuma, Arizona. Now I'm here to meet Ernie Adams. He is the creator of the Dwarf Car and the proprietor of the Dwarf Car Museum. Now, I've been told he's probably back in the workshop working on his latest creation. So let's see if we can find him so we can find out exactly what a dwarf car is and what he has on display in his dwarf car museum. Ernie, you here? There he is. Yep. Hey, Hi, Ernie. Ernie. How you doing? Good. I'm Greg. Welcome to the Dwarf Car Museum. Well, thank you. Looks like you've been working on some new cars, huh? Yeah, I'm building one back here in the back. This is the birthing room. Oh, the birthing room, that's great. <laughs> that's All where right. they start at. So what, what, uh, what exactly is a dwarf car and the Dwarf Car Museum? Well, the dwarf car is just a just like a real car, but it's smaller. It's all metal and got uh, straight legal and Toyota drivetrains in them. And, and I had a little neighbor kid that decided to call them dwarfs. Uh, so oh, okay. we actually called them dwarfs. When, when did you make your first dwarf car? The first dwarf car I made out of nine refrigerators in 1965. <laughs> then it was, uh, I created the dwarf race car after that. <clears throat> off of that car and I did that for about 10 years and then I decided I had made a homemade bead roller to put the print in the body on them so I decided with that bead roller I could make another set of dies and print the body on a real car so wow. I started so building street legal cars. When you were a kid did you make little soapbox cars and make I, all kinds of car stuff? I, my mother bought our home place in 1944 and it was close to the city dump. There was nothing but a field between us and the city dump. So during them early years, I was four years old when we moved there, and they were taking gas motors off of washing machines and putting electric on, and they would throw them old motors in the dump. I would pick them up, bring them home, and get them running. Didn't know what I was doing, but <laughs> I would get them running. i put them on wagons and tricycles and bicycles and put one on an old wicker wheelchair, <laughs> uh, made tiller bar steering on it, because back uh -huh. then, uh, wicker, the wheels didn't turn, so I made them turn. And wow, so you were quite the tinkerer from a young age. I was right? learning my trade back then and didn't know it. Wow. So I wow. got all the wagons and tricycles, bicycle parts and everything out of that city dump and put them together and make bicycles out of them. And wow, so when you, did you start the dwarf cars out here in Arizona or had you done them somewhere well, else? I built the first one back in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Iowa, okay. Uh, yeah, the one out of refrigerators and I brought it out here as a touring car. Hmm. Then I finished it up out here uh, later, a couple of years later, put a top on it and uh, sawed the doors open and put windows in it and everything. So are most of them, uh, what we'd say, um, faithful recreations of a larger car smaller or are they slightly different? They're just like the original car. If you look at the dash, they follow the knobs, the, the dash, everything's just like the original cars. Uh, I've only got one that's got uh, air conditioning and electric quarter windows. Uh, and it's a copy of a Chop Top 1940 Mercury. Wow. I've got one with an automatic transmission and a Hemi four cylinder in it. So that's what the millennials would have to drive because they wouldn't be able to drive the, st the manuals, right? <laughs> <laughs> Most of them got five-speed standard transmission. Oh, so where's that, that, that race car you were talking about, the first one you built? Which one is that? Is this is 99 over here? Well, this was built in 84. I started them in uh, 1980 was the first ones built. I, and, I had went to side hack races, and I wasn't satisfied with the way they turned the corner with the motorcycle and the side hack guy. Mm -hmm. So coming home, I had two neighbor guys that was... Uh, with me and I suggested that they should put four wheels on there and a the car body and and slide them corners and keep the mm -hmm. hammer down so 
my neighbor across the street here now, he said, well, if you build one, I'll build one. So <laughs> as we talked about it for about 10 minutes, and next thing you know, we was building one out of scrap that was laying around my backyard. Wow, and what kind of engine is, is that like an old little Honda That's Civic a engine? That's a, a Kawasaki, a Kawasaki motorcycle. All the dwarf race cars had motorcycle engine. Oh, okay. And they've evolved into the Legends car, the Baby Grands, uh, Mod Lights, uh, different things with that drivetrain. When I got out of it and didn't build the bodies anymore, mm -hmm. then they just made a slab-sided thing, slab-sided car with a number on it and mm -hmm. called it a, a Mod Light. Oh, okay, okay. And now you're, you're pretty tall, look like you're a good six foot. You, can you fit in all these cars? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have people sit in that rusty one there because that's the one I drive all the time. Uh, a lot of them get in there and say, I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then what's this is an interesting three-wheel trike looking thing. What, what, what is I going on here? I didn't build that car. That, no? uh, that was an old fella by the name of, of uh, Chuck. But uh, he built that and he drove it over here a few times. He liked to come over here and spend his hours in the winter time and he finished off the inside that room back there. He mm -hmm. built the public restrooms and oh, wow. fixed him a trailer out here to stay in the winter time mm -hmm. and and he wanted to put it in here so he had done so much work around here we let him put it in here. Oh okay. Okay so we've come to your back room you were mentioning uh, the other fellow helped you out with. You, this has got to have a story. I mean this is... This is called a hillbilly car. I, I met a fellow and his wife out of Missouri. His name was Zeke. And he had a Hillbilly Model A at a car show. And I wanted a Hillbilly Model A, but mine had to be miniature. So <laughs> I had to come home and build one to, to be miniature. I, mean, I, I have these thoughts of, you know, Route 66 and, you know, the people coming across and the Dust Bowl collecting as they're going. I yeah. mean, it, uh, the stuff that's on there is just amazing. Well, most everything on there was donated from somebody that wanted their stuff on there, you okay. know. There's an old still in the back. There's a <laughs> pot belly stove in the back seat that's all functional. Wow. There's a dinosaur hatching and egg hatching in the front seat there. <laughs> This is pretty slick, nice paint job. We got a convertible over here. That car yeah. was uh, nothing but a race car. It was built off my race car jig work, but it was built for a body shop in North Phoenix. And the body shop painted it, and they had bell glass put glass in it, and they had it upholstered by somebody, and the body shop came up with the boat. Oh. Oh, the, I didn't even the, see the, the car boat itself behind it. was built off my race car. Oh, wow. Now you mentioned Jay Leno when we were talking earlier had been here and he was out driving. Was it this convertible he was out driving? Yeah, Jay Leno drove this 42 Ford convertible, him and Brad Garrett. They drove it for an hour out on the road filming it. Now I can't imagine, I'm going to cross over the camera here for a second. I mean, Garrett is a big guy and Jay's no slouch either. I mean, they must have been a pair with their heads sticking out the top of this driving is, around, huh? He's really no bigger than I am. No? He's just a little bit taller. That's okay. All. What is this modeled after? That's a 1942 Ford. Wow. It's got all hydraulic top. Now, where do you start from? I mean, are start you custom? Every, oh, custom, totally start scratch. scratch. It's all wow. flat sheet metal. I make everything in the dash. It's all homemade, steering wheels homemade. Seats are homemade, all the top mechanisms, just like the original car. So do you make them for yourself? Are people buying them? Or what was, no, you know? I, I simply make them for myself. Oh, wow. I've had offers. The first offer I had was $150,000 for that little black one. No, and wow. the most I've had offered was 450000 for this one. Wow. A lot of sixty and seventy-five thousand dollar offers on that. Nice. That that is slick. I, that that's beautiful. Now this one here then must be a racer, right? So that's it's the first the very dwarf racer. First dwarf race car ever built, all original. Wow. By you. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that was uh, the old motor was sitting out in the backyard and some pieces of tin and we just started scrapping stuff together and but the size of it came from that refrigerator car down there. And that's the way we should go see that one because that's your first one, yeah, right? Yeah, that was the first metal car oh, I wow. built. 
Well, let's go look at that one because that sounds like a story. Uh, no, can we say can, the hood opens on this? Yeah. While we're going, I've got to see the because it says it wants a V8 on the license plate. <laughs> oh man. Now that is the 1290cc Toyota. Toyota. Okay. Wow. That is so cool. I, I'm just. I drove this uh, car from here to Fairmount, Indiana, and back to the James Dean run. Wow. Now you must have got a lot of honks and looks and oh, yeah. thumbs ups while you're driving of, by. A lot of picture taken, a lot of thumbs up. I've... Yeah. Visor, the skirts, the body, the frame, I'm everything. Seriously impressed. The dash, the dash looks just like original 49 Mercury. Oh. I made all the knobs, they look just like original. <laughs> and even that sounds like a bigger car. I mean, it's got the, what do you saw, the fullness or the, you know, the thickness of the Listen to construction. This. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Now, does this have a big, uh, like an engine like this one? Yeah, same, same style of motor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only it's 1166 instead of 1290. Okay. Wow. And that I made the house. headlight buckets and everything off that car out of flat sheet metal. That's amazing. I no, didn't have an English wheel at that time. So the sides of the hood came out a little bit on the flat oh, side. Oh. Now is that more like a bonnet or a English bonnet or is it goes it, straight it, up? It opens up uh, side to side. Okay, so like, yeah, like the English cars. It was, I guess some American cars didn't open like this also. Opening, Butterfly they call it. So when a guest comes here, I, I've seen some no touching signs, but in general are they they allowed to sit in the cars, or is it just uh, pretty much viewing? We let them sit in that one because that's the one I drive all the time. Okay. And it's easier to get in there with the suicide doors. Mm. Oh, I love suicide doors. But this is the one we were talking about. This is a refrigerator car? This is made out of nine refrigerators. That's... <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Now, uh, the first, before I came out, or when I came out here, it didn't have a top on it, and you could see the white refrigerator <laughs> there yet. And then uh, this was this was taken in '71, and then up to 1973, I put another refrigerator on top and cut the refrigerator door in 10-inch pieces. I didn't know how to bend the metal, so mm. that's why I used the refrigerator, uh, the natural bends of it, you know. And these chrome knobs down here, that's just that drawer pull cut in half is all. Oh. I didn't get them chromed or anything. Oh, that's, that's creative and a good use. That's and I cut the uh, upper hinge here with a hammer and chisel and put a coat hanger wire in there. Wow. Learning your, you're learning your trade and craft as you go, though. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like... The steering wheel is a slice gate off a of Betcher Cleaver slicer. <laughs> uh, wow. Now, you, did I hear or hear you say everything's street legal here? Uh, these two aren't. Those two, okay. The rest of them are. Now, this looks like something, though, you know, that you drive in a parade or, you know, really have some fun with. But do, is yeah, it ever I'm, taken out or? I had a, there was a blue ribbon on here from first place in a trade, in a parade. I mean, that, that is just There's awesome. a still on the back corner over there, honest to goodness, still. <laughs> I mean, this, this is like a step up from the Shriners, but it was, seems like something I'd see a Shriner drive through a parade. Well, um, the Shriners wanted to buy this car when I had it in a parade early on, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, they so, offered me $35 for it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, these are giants compared to their cars, but small compared to the uh, this cars these days. The fellow that gave me this was 77 when he died, and his grandfather gave it to him when his grandfather was 77. Ooh, wow. That's a real authentic shotgun. Wow. This is an eclectic collection. I mean, there's, there's skates, there's toys, there's, there's a little bit of everything. There's the chain drive hand grinder I've ever seen right there. It's got like a half inch binder chain on it. <laughs> and I got Don Laughlin in the Riverside Cottage here. <laughs> I think that might be her dad getting oh. his gun out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, you, and you've got a great collection of you know car stuff, memorabilia around yeah. here, license plates. There's articles here from Austria, Poland, Germany, Sweden, New Zealand, wow. Canada. Are you considered in Maricopa? 
we're, we got a Maricopa address, but we're not uh, incorporated with Maricopa. Okay, now we drove up from Phoenix, took a, you know, about an hour and a half, I mean, uh, Tucson. I take it we're about halfway to Phoenix also, so about another hour and a half up there. Yeah, it's 40 miles into the south part of Phoenix. Okay, so you're really accessible to two big cities here in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And then what is uh, your hours of operation? Are you open? We're every open seven days a week, holidays and all, so nine to four. Nine to four, year round? Year round. Okay, awesome. Yeah. We usually have somebody here. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to get out of here, but I've got <laughs> the, my friend there is, I'm kind of assisting him building a car, and it works really good to have him here if I have to go somewhere. Sure, yeah. People know him as well as they know me. Awesome. So let's go look at that one that you let people drive and you take out as a, yeah. it's like your daily driver. Would you like to sit in there? I'll try. I've got a little bit of stiff back today, but. One hand in the seat, go in head first, and then you just roll your butt right, right under we'll the We'll see how my there. back is doing You'll today. Make it. All right. There was a fella got in there, weighed 360 pounds, and he was six foot eight. Wow. Okay, so he's gonna shame me into getting in here. <laughs> All right. Wow. That's kind of cool. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Even the radio's got the perfect music on in here. You even got room for your lady friend. <laughs> Not bad visibility either. That is really cool. Now put both feet put, out. Both feet out. out. And then put your elbow in the window here to help no. you get up. <laughs> ah, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, that's what back surgery does to you. Oh boy, that is so. Is it ride pretty? Oh yeah, pretty smooth. Good. Yeah, I'd, probably once I get used to looking out that window. But that was pretty cool. What's the, there was a little handle like right? That's right uh, there. cranks the windshield off. Now see, oh. this has got everything the real car's got. It's got radio, heater, defrosters, windshield wipers, uh, cal vent, uh, ashtray, cigarette lighter. Turn signals, windshield mm -hmm. wipers, uh, windshield rolls out, the rear windows roll up and down. Everything the real car's got. And I had to make these wheels for this car and that car. Excuse me. So you've made the wheels, but they've got to have a standard tire size. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Toyota tires. Okay. And the, the part the tire fits on is Toyota. I made the center section and mm -hmm. assembled them, made all the spokes and everything. Every time you say something again, I'm more and more impressed by your, your craftsmanship and your work. It's amazing. <laughs> I made the horns. Wow. <laughs> I love the hood ornaments, too. Classic stuff that... That is uh, off a 1935-36 Auburn. A lady gave it to me while I was building this car, and I said, well, I'll just put that on the car I'm building right now. That's I nice. love it. That's nice. It, it fits this car real good. It sure does. This is a 1934 Ford. Wow. That's nice. And this one here, Pretty Woman, it that's is a pretty a 30, car. That's a 32 Ford. And the only, uh, these wheels are the same as those, except the smaller out where the hubcap goes on. Nice. Wow. And I make oh. the door handles, the bumpers, frame, front axle. This, this one reminds me like it should have been in the movie Cars. Uh, it's got that <laughs> it's the, a little later model look. Yeah. But this one, this is pretty slick too, and the, the chrome work is amazing. Now, Gene over here built that car. With Hi, my Gene. Assistance. He, <laughs> he came out here and talked me into assisting him building one. So I was building this one, and he was building that one right there where it sits. Wow. And I let him do the work and I just kind of guided him through it. Oh, that's amazing. Even down to the exhaust coming down the side, and the, the wheel covers, that's amazing. I make the door handles, the, all the knobs in there. Uh, everything, the dash is just like the original car. Mm. I make all the stainless, the headlight bezels. Wow. 
bumpers, frames. Uh, so cool. So what's your present project? What are you, what are you making now? That's a 1941 Chevy back there I'm building now in the birthing room back there. <laughs> what did, how long did it take you to build that car? It takes about 3,000 hours. 3,000 hours. These, this car, this car, and this car, when I, I licensed that in 2013, I think, and that one in 2016, and this one in 2018. About three years apart. Wow. But it's about 3,000 hours per car. And then the, the motor vehicle departments have been fairly easy about, you say you drive this we one. Don't, so. We don't have a problem getting license on them because they told me we don't care what car parts you use because you don't use the body or frame that's registered. Oh. We, we make everything in the body and uh, inside and everything. Really they all have exactly the right amount of grill bars and everything. Yeah. So you, you, I mean, every detail is, nothing's overlooked. Yeah. And then these are all water cooled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Except for the race, is the racer water cooled too? No, those have motorcycle. Yeah, they're just air cooled. This one, the the hood all functions just like the original. <sighs> Look at that. <sighs> this is just an air tank, so I don't need a recovery system. It just compresses that air, and don't puke any out. The radiator sits below there. Wow. And this one has air conditioning in it. It's all factory with the motor. Uh, so what do they weigh roughly? About 1,900 to 2,000 pounds. You know. And no problem, highway speed? Oh, they, run, they top out at 100 miles an hour. Oh. <laughs> I, I drove that little black one to uh, the good guy's show in Des Moines, Iowa, first trip out of town. I run 90 mile an hour out across the flat following a Ford pickup there wow. for several miles. <laughs> I imagine you are the toast of the town when you're on the freeway driving these things. Though. I drove that 42 Ford convertible to Chicago and back. I met up with Americruz in Wakanda, Illinois and traveled back to Lincoln, Nebraska to the main show. Mm. I got a uh, Rod and Custom Magazine Editor's Choice Award because she was riding with the guy that uh, where it started out at uh, Hyde's Rod Shop. And uh, it was in two magazines. Wow. When did you actually open up as a museum? Well, we had people start signing in uh, fourth month of 11. Uh, but the kids asked me one day, said, Dad, what are you going to do with your cars when you're dead and gone? I said, hell, I don't know. Take them. Sell them, take the money and run. Don't keep them running like I do. And they said that three boys, they said they had talked it over and they'd like to see it all stay together, you know. Mm -hmm. So they said, let's build a room on the back of your shop and keep them all together. So I oh, said, sounds good to me. I don't want to sell them as long as I'm alive. So <laughs> then people come in and said, oh, this is just like a museum. So we had it legally registered as a museum. Oh, nice, nice. And you, how many people do you think you've had come through since you opened up as a museum? Oh, I would have no idea, yeah. but I know at one time <laughs> we had 3,800 people signed in in less than two months. Wow. So, But you can, you can figure in the wintertime 100 a day. Wow. But we get as much as 250 in a day. Wow. That's amazing. It's and, just so cool. Uh, 150 a lot of days. That is really cool. Well, Ernie, I really appreciate the time you spent with us. Uh, this stuff is amazing. Your craftsmanship is outstanding. It's, it's just a wonderful place. So, all right, again, thank you. I'll let you get back to your car. It looks like you got a few, few hundred hours left on that at least. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. thinking in my head, or doing too much thinking. So I'm here at the Dwarf Museum in Maricopa, California. See, I knew I'd screw that.